Welcome to the segment on forwarders. There are two main types of forwarders in Splunk. Universal forwarders and heavy forwarders. In this segment, I'm going to focus mainly on universal forwarders, and in the next segment, we'll talk about heavy forwarders. Universal forwarders are the most popular, they're the easiest to install, and you can install them on the local machine, and they can also be configured using a deployment server if you have a distributed environment set up in Splunk. The default ports that universal forwarders talk on are 8089 for management and 9997 for indexing. Heavy forwarders are simply a complete installation of the Splunk Enterprise software, but you apply a forwarder license. Heavy forwarders do much of the heavy lifting at the source, including parsing data. And heavy forwarders can be configured at the source, but are often configured through a deployment server. Forwarders will not work unless you configure receiving. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten about configuring receiving when setting up Splunk instances. Simply go to Settings, Forwarding and Receiving, and then Add New, and we'll show you how to do this in the demo. So here is how my lab is set up. I have a Windows forwarder, an Ubuntu forwarder, and a Splunk search head. My two Windows machines are Windows 10 Enterprise. And when we go through our demo, I'll make sure to let you know which machine is which and what exactly we are doing. On the right, I have my Windows 10 Splunk search head, the one that we've been using throughout the class. On my left, I have a Windows 10 machine that will be used as a universal forwarder and then a heavy forwarder. And here in the middle, in my terminal, I have my Ubuntu machine on which we will stall, install forwarders. So first of all, let's open up our Splunk web. And as you can see, we have no data coming in because we haven't yet forwarded any data or uploaded any data or told Splunk to monitor any data. Click on data summary, nothing coming in. So what we want to do is forward data to this machine. And the first thing I want to do is find out what the IP address of this machine is, since I don't have DNS set up on this virtual machine network. 172.16.182.150, and I'll just put that on the screen there. And let's configure receiving. So we'll go to settings, forwarding and receiving, and under configure receiving, we'll choose add new, and it says listen on this port. 9997 is the default port number, so we will go with that. You can make it whatever port, well, whatever ephemeral port you want, as long as you remember what it is. Okay, it is enabled. Now let's install a Windows Universal Forwarder on this machine. And honestly, the easiest way to find it is to search Splunk Universal Forwarder. And it's usually the first link. And we'll choose the forwarder that's right for our operating system. In this case, it's Windows. But as you can see, we have all these other options here. So I'm going to download the 64-bit MSI installer, and it will make me log in with my Splunk account. We'll save the downloaded file. And just to show you where it is, it will probably be in your downloads folder, and there it is. Go ahead and run the installer. Of course, you have to accept the license agreement. Now, I like to choose this customize options, and I'll show you why. I don't really care where a forwarder installs. I don't really care right now about SSL stuff. We can leave the local system to run the forwarder service for right now. And here is why I like to customize options, because I want to make sure that all of these boxes are ticked. And if you don't have a need for some of these items, then you should not tick the box, because then you're just creating pollution and noise. And here's where we type in 
the IP address of our Splunk. In this case, our Splunk search head, if we have a distributed environment, the Splunk indexer. And it was 172. And the port for deployment is 8089. And this is going to be the same. But the port number will be 9997. And we'll proceed with the installation. On some versions of Windows 10 or Windows Server 2012 or 2016, I have seen a universal forwarder install hang at this point. If that happens to you, the workaround that I've found is to use Task Manager to stop Windows Installer, reboot the Windows machine, run the installer again, but this time leave the deployment server and the forwarding server information blank. Then the installer will run, but the settings that you put in the first time you ran the installer will persist. And we can verify that our settings are correct by looking at the config files. So we'll browse the file system, go to C, Program Files, Splunk Universal Forwarder, Etsy, System, Local, and we're interested in this outputs.conf file and I just opened it with notepad and here we are we have the correct server and the correct port so that's all we're really concerned with and let's make sure that our universal forwarder service is running by going to services.msc and we'll scroll down until we get to Splunk and it is running. Let's go back to our Splunk search head and let's see if we are getting any data now. Search and reporting app and it still says waiting for data. If we click on data summary we don't have any data coming in. The first thing we want to check for troubleshooting is that those two ports are open on the Windows firewall. So click on start and search for Windows firewall and the first thing we can do is simply turn it off. If this is not a production environment, this is fine to do. If it is a production environment, I recommend you skip this step. And we definitely aren't going to leave it off. I just want to see if we can make some data come in. I'll refresh the search head. And now we have six events. The earliest event was a month ago. The latest event was 10 minutes ago. Let's see where our data is coming from and it's coming from the machine called desktop-360am4d so let's see if that's our machine here okay great yes it is so we do have data coming in from our universal forwarder on windows let's now install a universal forwarder on our linux machine the first thing i'm going to do is search for Splunk Universal Forwarder again and this time I'm going to choose the Linux version and again you can choose whichever file type you like to work with and that works with your flavor of Linux. I like the tarball so I'm going to click on download now and I'm going to cancel the download because all I want is this command line wget string. Click here to select the entire command. I'm going to simply copy that and then type in Ubuntu sudo paste the wget string and it will download the Splunk universal forwarder. Let's make sure that happened. There it is. Let's now copy that to opt. That's where Splunk likes to live. And there it is in opt. Now let's untar it. And it created this directory called Splunk Forwarder, so let's browse to that. And there are our traditional Splunk directories. 
And once we have the Splunk Forwarder untarred like this, we want to enable boot start. So whenever this Ubuntu machine reboots, we want to have the Splunk Forwarder daemon start automatically. So let's go to the bin directory. And in the bin directory, we'll simply type sudo splunk enable boot start. And Ubuntu, we have to do dot slash, which I forgot. And if you do not do the dash dash accept dash license switch, you have to scroll through this huge end user license agreement. But of course, I have the magic of video editing, so I will just skip this part. And finally, accept the license agreement. And now, still in the bin directory, we want to do sudo dot slash Splunk. We're going to add the address of the Splunk search head. We'll simply say add forward server and our IP address of the server with the colon default port number. And we'll see if it actually accepted that sudo Splunk list. forward server. And there it is. It is configured but inactive because we in Linux we have to explicitly tell it which data to monitor and send on to the Splunk search head. And to do that we use the command Splunk add add monitor and then the path to the directory or file that you want Splunk to monitor and send on to the Splunk search head. So I'm just going to do for right now var log and we'll see if the forward server now became active. And no it is not active yet because we have to restart the Splunk service. Now we'll list the forward servers and look at that, it is an active forward server now. And let's go to our search head and see if that data is coming in. So we'll go back home. Searching and reporting. A few seconds ago for the latest event, that's good news. Let's click on data summary. And now we have all of this extra stuff from Ubuntu server, syslog D, UTC, and 2016. And remember, as part of our troubleshooting, we turned the firewall off on this machine. So let's turn it back on, but let's make sure we have the appropriate ports open. We'll search for firewall, go to advanced settings, go to inbound rules, and we'll click on new rule, and we'll choose port. And we'll leave that on TCP. Does anybody remember the two Splunk ports that we need to open here? Good job. 9997-8089. Next, allow all the networks. We'll call it Splunk. There it is. And let's make sure our firewall is on. OK, everything's on. And let's refresh the search head. And we have data coming in from a few seconds ago. And it's all there, just as we expect. In this module, we successfully installed a universal forwarder on Windows and Linux. I really thank you for joining me in this segment and for following along. And I'll see you in the next segment when we install heavy forwarders.